Yo, the city don't love me. Me know said the city don't love me. Me don't have a job, no money. Lord, the baby hungry. I just get a life. We are search for the paradise. That one and him get a life. We need a way to survive. I just get a life. We are search for the paradise. That one and him get a life. The system traumatized. Listen to the elder. My granny never tell me no lie. When she said the system it don't lie. The door of no mercy society. You don't listen to the ghetto youth vibes. Many ghetto youth them style. Everybody pick me one for no lie. At the prison and the jail them fine. Tell me what them want with their fight. Every ghetto. Yeah, 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 yeah. Once again, too loud to let Hebrew speak. You are tuned to the Priest and Prophets of the Lord on WPB 88.1 FM. I'm going to start with the views, statements, and comments of other people speak. And I guess do not necessarily affect those of WPB 88.1 FM, the members of the board of WPB 88.1 FM. Now, with that being said, today's topic is going to lead into the series that we're going to go into on how to get ourselves together, how to fix our neighborhoods, how to fix our kids, how to get things right. Because we've been trying for a very long time, but we haven't got it right. You understand? We live with drugs, murder, deaths, diseases, then we ain't been doing it right. You understand that? We ain't been doing it right according to the Lord. But we're going to get into a series and share with the most high self on how to get it right. If we follow his program, then we're going to get it right. You done had the philosophies. You done had Christianity. You done had um, Islam. You done had Buddhism. You done had... Uh, uh, people went to Zen, Hinduism, we had all the different philosophies and doctrines on this earth and they have not helped us or our communities. You understand? But we're going to share what the Lord said on how to get it right. But the first start with this here. The benefits. What are the benefits of being an Israelite? What are the benefits of being a Jew? When I say the Jews or the Israelites, I'm talking about the black man, Hispanic Native Indian. You are the true biblical Hebrew Israelites. According to the Bible, according to the Torah, according to history, according to archaeology, you are the true biblical Hebrew Israelites. Now, with that being said, let's find out what the Lord said on how to get this right. On how to fix this problem, right? First, you start with the benefits. What benefit is there in being an Israelite? Quality, I'll give you Romans 3, verse 1. Romans chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then have the Jew? Say it again. What advantage then have the Jew? What does it mean to have an advantage? I mean, you got one over somebody. I mean, you are above somebody. Advantages mean you got something that's over other people or over someone. So what advantage is there in being a Jew? Being what? An Israelite. Go ahead. Or what profit is there of circumcision? The circumcision. A little biblical history. Genesis, the 17th chapter. The Most High gave Abraham the covenant of the circumcision. That was what he passed down to Israelites. So what benefit is that covenant? Go ahead. Verse 2. Much every way. Say it again. Much every way. The Bible says much every way. So what advantage? You might say, well, what does it mean? So what does it matter if I'm Israelite or not? What does it matter? What advantage do I get from being Israelite? The Bible says much every way. The Lord says much every way. Go ahead. Chiefly. Chiefly meaning mainly. When it says chiefly means mainly. Go ahead. Because unto them were committed the oracles of the Most High. Who is the them? The Israelites or the Jews. What are the oracles? These biblical records. That everybody on the earth tried to steal from. That everybody on the earth tried to copy from. You understand? These things right here. These records. You understand that? Before Christianity started in about 300 AD, you had the records of the oracles of the Israelites. Before Islam started, or before Muhammad was born, after 600 years after the death of Christ, you had Hebrew Israelite records. These records, these oracles. Go ahead. Verse 3. But what if some did not believe? Some of y'all don't want to believe it. Some of y'all don't want to believe, well, there ain't no benefit in being an Israelite. Or, you want to say, I am an Israelite. And we ask you, what's your race? What's your nationality? You know what you say? You said, I'm black. Or some of you say, you're African-American. 
Well, I challenge you on that. <coughs> to be an African American means you are saying that you are the descendant of two people, Leo Scipius Africanus, an Italian explorer, or Americos Vespucci, another Italian explorer. To say you're African American, you're saying that you come from them two people right there. So I challenge you on that. Go ahead. Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? Because you don't want to believe in what the truth of the Bible says is to make without effect. Does it mean you still not an Israelite? No, you still an Israelite. This still your heritage. Every so-called black, Hispanic, they have Indian, them in America, no South Central, the Caribbean Islands, this your heritage. So if you don't want to believe it, does it make it without effect? No, you still an Israelite. You still live in the blessings and curses. Go ahead. Verse 4. For the most high forbid. God forbid meaning no. Go ahead. Yea, let the power be true, but every man a lie. Let me tell you something. This is how you know a man of the law. Or somebody who's truthful to you. They ain't telling you the truth according to the Bible. Let God's word be true. Meaning what's written in the scriptures. And if a man telling you something that's not in the Bible, he's lying to you. Period. He's not telling you the truth. Go ahead. Count on one count. That thou mightest be justified in thy saints. Man, you're going to be justified when you're teaching this truth, man. Every young brother, every young sister need to know that they come from royalty, a royal bloodline. They're trying to show every day with the gold they want to wear, the chains they want to wear, how they live, I mean not how they live, but how they dress. They're trying to dress like regality, you know what I mean? Call the top. Call them, call them. They're trying to dress like it, not knowing their true heritage come from a royal bloodline. Black man, Hispanic, Native Indian, you come from the tribes, the nation of Israel. The word Israel means prince of power. It's in your blood to be how you are as far as the way you're trying to dress and looking good all the time. Wearing world clothing. Because that's what royalty does. The problem is you don't know the true history of who you are. You understand? Go ahead. And modest overcome when thou art judged. Meaning when Christ comes back here the second time, we're gonna be overcome because we're not going to be we not gonna get burnt with fire when Christ comes back. We're gonna get taken up in them chariots. You understand? To establish the kingdom of Israel all over the earth. But that being said, shout out, let me get Romans 9 and 4. Romans 9 verse 4. Go ahead. Who are the Israelites? Who are the who? Who are the Israelites? Who are these 12 tribes of the nation of Israel? Who is the black man, Hispanic, Native Indian? Who are the Israelites? Go ahead. To whom pertains the adoption? To whom pertains the adoption? What does that mean? Let's start with the word pertains. Pertain means to belong to. That's what it means. Pertain means to belong to. Who does this adoption belong to? According to the Bible and to the book of Galatians, it belongs to the Israelites. Them that were under the law or redeemed under the law. In Galatians so this 4. Adoption belong to. You understand? According to the Bible. And Go ahead. And the glory. What's the glory? The glory is the kingdom of heaven. Revelation, the 21st chapter. Go ahead. And the covenants. And the covenants. The covenants, the thing the Most High gave us. In the Old Testament and the New Testament, it pertains to who? The Israelites. Go ahead. And the giving of the law. Who is the law given to? Meaning, do this and don't do that. Let me tell you something. When you find out you're a Hebrew Israelite, and you start doing what the Lord say do, and come back to your heritage, that's going to stop 99.99.9% of the problem that we are having in the black community today. These young brothers out here won't be robbing, they won't be stealing, they won't be murdering, they won't be selling drugs to each other, they won't be fighting over money because we won't have ourselves a nation again. That's half the problem. We won't be whoremongering. All those things we do in our head will stop. You know why? We got back the laws of the Lord. We got back the heritage of the Most High. Go ahead. And the service of God. And the what? And the service of God. And the what? And the service of God. What's the service of God? The priestly duties. That's the service of the Lord. Go ahead. And the promises. And the promises. The thing that was given to the nation of Israel. Them 12 child, the promises, man. You understand? What are the promises? To become the Lord's people. That's the promises. 
And this covenant was given to one particular people on earth. That's the benefit of being an Israelite. That's the benefit of being a Jew. Black man, Hispanic, Native Indian, you are the real Jews according to the Bible. You are the biblical, ancient Hebrew Israelites. That's your heritage. That's where you come from. And you can't get away from it. As much as you try to get away from it, you can't. Because when you run from the Lord, it means you're running from what he said for you to do. So now you're being disobedient. So now the curse is applied to us. But when we stop being disobedient and start doing the laws they do, then the curses don't apply to us. You understand? They don't apply to us. But that being said, listen, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back with some more on the benefits of being an Israelite or being a Jew. Be right back. so-called European that called himself a Jew. He then took your biblical principles and made him an empire on the earth. And you know how he did it? First he said he was a real Jew, which he's not according to the Bible. According to history and according to archaeology, you can't even prove that. According to the Torah, he can't prove that. But I can prove according to the Torah, the Tanakh, history, archaeology, and the Bible that the black men in America, Hispanic Native Indians, they're in the North, South, Central America, and the Caribbean Islands, you are the real Jew. We can prove that. They took them principles that's in the Bible of coming together on your own and being down with your own people, and they built wealth on this earth. They took your principles, man. Right? And right now, they didn't got money upon money upon money by coming together as one. That's what we got to do. Matthew, back off for 121. Come on. Who got it? Right. Read. Matthew 1, verse 21. Come on. And she shall bring forth a son, mm -hmm. and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Who's the she? It's talking about Mary. She's going to bring forth this son. Go ahead. For he shall save his people. Say it again. For he shall save his people. Who's his people? Now they teach you with everybody, but that's a lie. That's right. Because Christ was a Jew from the tribe of Judah. Everybody know that. Mm -hmm. How was he a Jew? From his father, Joseph. He said he come to save his people. Go ahead. From their sins. From their sins. Meaning from what they do wrong against the most high. That's the point. Because we are sinning, we don't have the good thing the most high got for us, man. Mm -hmm. What's that scripture, brother, where it says your sins have been holding good things from you? Is it Isaiah 59? It's in Isaiah, I can find it, sir. Please find it for me, brother. Come on, come on. Find that for me. And I want you to read that scripture one more time for me, Ishaya. Come on. Read. In Matthew 1, verse 21. Go ahead. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Jesus. And the Hebrew his name is Yahweh Shah. Right. The correct breakdown for Christ's son name is Yahweh Shah. Go ahead. For he shall save his people. From their sins. Meaning what? From the things you're doing wrong against the Lord, man. You understand? That's what it's talking about. There's benefits in being an Israelite. There's benefits of doing things the right way. And living in a righteous society. There's benefits in doing it. But right now we ain't living in benefits. We live in the curses that the Bible says. That's us. Why? Because we're not doing the Lord say do. Our sins are withholding good things from us, meaning us going against the most high. Us not doing the Lord say do. Q, try Isaiah 59 and 2. I, I ain't say I think that's it. I think it's 59 and 2, brother. Try that for me real fast. Because the Bible states it clearly, man. Our sins are withholding good things from us. I got Isaiah 59 and 2. Is that it? Nah, That's not it? Nah, okay, no, so this is in Isaiah somewhere. Come on, come on. I don't know if it's Isaiah 59 and 3, 54, or somewhere in Isaiah. Just find it for me. Come on, come on. We need that scripture, man. And while we're waiting to shine, give me Matthew 10, 5, and 6. Come on. 
Because Christ came and showed us how to get the story right. They get, the, get, they get their actions right. To do things the right way. And not do things the way we want to do it. Or how we feel. Or even what we think. You understand? The Lord looking for obedience. He ain't looking for uh, uh, a dialogue. Right. Like, y'all want a dialogue with the Lord's word. <laughs> it kills me with this. Do I got my own personal interpretation of the way I think and the way I feel? Who said that? Where's that in the Bible at? Lord looking for men and women to be faithful to him. To do what it say do. That's what the Lord looking for, man. Keep looking for, you got it for me? Come on, come on. Uh, Most high Christ. Read it for me. Tell me you had Kim. I'm in Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 25. There you go. Your iniquities have turned away these things. Go ahead. And your sins have withhold the good things from you. See that? Because you sinned against the Most High. Because, number one, you want to claim your true heritage as a Hebrew Israelite. You want to claim everything else. That's a sin according to the Lord. The Most High gave us a name. That's Hebrew Israelites. You ain't supposed to be called by nothing else. Because you want to do things against the Most High. Eating crab, shrimp, pork, lobster. Things that are an abomination to the Lord. Claiming different philosophies and doctrine. That's an abomination to the Lord. That's a sin. You understand that? That is a sin doing those things. To teach any other philosophy that's other than within the Bible is a sin. And you're not going to claim the benefits of being in right by committing sins. Like I said, your sins have with all the good things from you. That's why Christ had to come in Matthew, the first chapter, to save you from your sins. Right. To show you how to do it right. He came like you. He was born like all of us. Christ had a mother and father. The same way we came to earth, he came into the earth. To be an example of how to get it right. That's the benefit of being an Israelite. And we take on that benefit. And we're going to change our communities. We're going to change the way we live. And we have a bright future for our kids in this society. We will. We'll be protected. And we'll be living the way we're living right now. Matthew 10, 5 and 6. Matthew 10, verse 5. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, mm -hmm. and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Who are the lost sheep of the house of Israel? Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. You them child child. You are the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And Christ said, go to you. Why? So you can reap these benefits of being an Israelite. So he can save you from your sins. That's why. So we can start living a better life. Which is what we need today in America. We need a better way. We need a better life. Now why did he say this? Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Why did he say this? Why did he say, go to them particular people? Because the Bible says it. Christ ain't doing nothing but teaching us in the Old Testament. That's all. His mission is still the same mission that was in the Old Testament. Nothing changed. Read them stories of when brothers came together in the Old Testament and how we flourished as a people, how we lived as a nation, how we came together as one. And then read the stories on how we did come together as one and how destroyed and distraught we were. Deuteronomy 7 6, who got it? Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Q, give me 2 Samuel 7 and 23. Go ahead, Yashai. For thou art an holy people. Say it again. For thou art an holy people. Go ahead. Unto the Lord thy God. Go ahead. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Let me tell you something, black man, Hispanic, Native Indian. You the special people that the Lord chose to be to himself. Huh? That's why Christ had to come save you from your sins. Because you're the one that's special to the Lord. You understand? Hold on, we got a call coming to the Lord on one second. Keep on reading. I'll read it again. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Yes. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all yes, people that are upon the face of the earth. Come on, go on. Come on. Verse 7, the Lord did not set his love upon you, 
nor choose you, because ye are more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers. When did he swear that oath? Back in the book of Genesis, the 17th chapter. That's when he swore that oath. We're going to talk about history. Every child, every black child, Hispanic child, Native Indian child, he didn't know this history. You understand? That oath he swore to our forefathers, to Abraham. The Bible says Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They don't say nobody else. I don't care what you're pushing. I don't care what you're saying. I don't care how good it sounds. You like to play with words out here today's time. But you can't game us up with words no more. I want proof and facts, and you can't give them. I don't see no proof and no facts. It said Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Who's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's forefather? That's the black man's forefather, Hispanic man's forefather, the Avenue man's forefather. This is the oath of covenant that was given to us. Now give me 2 Samuel 7, 23 real fast. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 23. You try to give me Jeremiah 31, 35. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people? What one nation in the earth is like the black man, the Spanish native Indian? Huh? What nation? There is none. We the salt of the earth. We get this earth flavor. Everybody try to copy off of us and what we do and how we act. Even in our wickedness, we set in standards in this earth. Can you imagine what we do when we get right with the Lord? Read. Even like Israel. Even like unto Israel, the prince of power, man. That's what Israel means, the prince of power. I heard somebody tell me this part of the time. It blew my mind. I couldn't, I had to open my mouth with this, my jaw dropped. But he said Israel means ISIS, I mean IS means ISIS, RA means Ra, and EL means Elohim. And when he said it to me quite a time, my mouth dropped like I couldn't believe what he was saying. Mm. Like I was stuck. Like where do you get that from? Like how do you come up with that part there? The word Israel means prince with power. That's what it means. Yasha Allah in the Hebrew. Once again, these cats playing with words out here. But you, no more games. You can't game us up with like women out here no more, man. You went into some brothers who staunch and stern for the word of the Lord. Keep on reading. Whom God went to redeem for a people to himself. The most High, the Bible said he went to redeem Israel for himself. Everybody know about it. That's why we went to the New Testament. To prove to you that Paul said the same thing that Christ said. Them 12 tribes, the nation of Israel, ain't no separation. The old go with the new. The new go with the old. Still for one people, them Israelites. Blacks, Hispanics, it have been these beautiful Israelites. Let's get back our heritage and get back the benefits that come from the Lord. Go ahead. And to make him a name and do, and to do for you great things. And do for us what? Great things. Great things for us. Let me tell you something. What great things we done done? We don't have our own empire. We ain't got our own society. What great things have we done? We have made another people great. We have made the land of America great. We have made the so-called European, we made his nation great. We ain't made ours great. Because while you making them great, we are still at the bottom of the barrel, the bottom of the pile. Why? Because you ain't trying to claim back your heritage. You ain't trying to get back the benefit of being a Jew on Israelite. Three, come on, come. And terrible, but for thy land, before thy people which thou redeemedest to thee from Egypt. Now the Bible said terrible means this. When it's terrible means this. Anybody that come up against us, he gonna be a terrible power to them. That's right. You understand that? Anybody try to do any harm to them Hebrew Israelites, them blacks and Spanish and Indians, the Lord gonna see them. The Lord going to deal with them. And the way the Lord see fit, be a terrible power unto them. If you haven't read the book of Numbers, the 23rd chapter, but this king tried to put a curse on us. And the witch he went to said, listen, man, you can't deal with them people. Take down with the Lord. Read. From the nations, and their gods. It said from the nations. The other people on the earth. And their gods. I mean, they're going to try to do something to us that he's going to be terrible unto them. 
Go ahead. That's it on that. That's it on that? Jeremiah 31, 35. Go fast, you shy. Jeremiah 31, verse 35. Two, Romans 11, 1 and 2. Thus oh. saith the Lord. Thus saith who? Thus saith the Lord. Go ahead. Which giveth the sun for his light mm -hmm. by day, mm -hmm. and the ordinances of the moon, and of the stars for a, for a light by night. The sun, the moon, the stars. Right now it's, it's in the morning time. The sun is blazing down on the earth right now. You understand? The sun blazing down on the earth right now. So the sun is out. Go ahead. Which divided the sea when the waves thereof roar. When you go to the beach, you see the, the waves and the ocean roaring when you go to the beach. Go ahead. The Lord of hosts is, is his name. The Lord of hosts. Hosts means army. The Lord of the army. Go ahead. Is his name. And those ordinances depart from me. If these things depart from the Lord, meaning if there is no more sun, which the sun is out right now, if there is no more, no more moon, no more stars, no more waves roaring, go ahead. Saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. See that? Now let me say something to you. If we don't have no more sun, then there is no more children of Israel. Well, I'm looking at the sun right now. So that means the children of Israel are still God's chosen people. Who are they? The black man, Hispanic, Native Indian. You are the children of Israel, and you still God's chosen people. I don't care what nobody said. Listen, we done done battles and debates with everybody on the earth. We done been up in New York, in the House of Conscience community, and we done battled on their philosophies and doctrine, and can't none of them stand against the word of the Lord. We done debated Egyptologists. We done debated Christians. We done debated Muslims. We done debated all of them. And guess what? They all failed. You know why? It ain't from the Lord. That's why. When you gonna wake up and realize who you truly are to get back these benefits? You still Hebrew Israelites, black man, Hispanic, Native Indian. That's still your true heritage. And God calling you back to who you truly were. To get back that regality, that royalty, that royal bloodline, and to live it. Romans 11, Romans 11 verse 1 and 2, Quadrizah. Romans chapter 11, verse 1. I say then, have the Most High cast away his people? Say it again. I say then, have the Most High cast away his people? For all y'all that say that ain't no more 12 tribes. For all y'all that say that the 12 tribes is going and done away with. Paul asking y'all a question. You like to use Paul and say Paul separated the nation of Israel. You like to say those things, but you say them out of ignorance. You know what ignorance means? It means you don't know. You're speaking out of ignorance. I mean, you just don't know what you're saying. And Paul will correct you right here. Go ahead. God forbid. Say it again. God forbid. Say it again. God forbid. That means no. Has God got rid of them black men? His spending Native Indian men? Men, women, and children? No, he has not. The problem is you rejecting the Lord. He don't want to reject us. We rejecting him by how you living, by what you doing. Go ahead. But I'm gonna come. For I also am an Israelite. Paul setting the record straight. Paul said he's an Israelite as well. He part of them twelve tribes. Go ahead. Of the seed of Abraham. Of the what, brother? The seed of Abraham. He comes from the lineage of Abraham. Go ahead. Of the tribe of Benjamin. Of the what, brother? Of the tribe of Benjamin. Of the tribe of Benjamin. Let you know what particular lineage he comes from. Do you understand? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jacob's son Benjamin is where Paul comes from. Who's Benjamin? Benjamin are the so-called West Indians. Right. Whether you live in Jamaica, Trinidad, Tobago, Barbados, St. Kitt, all those areas over there, you are from the seed of Benjamin, according to the Bible, according to Genesis 49 and Deuteronomy 33. Do you understand? Read. Verse 2. God have not cast away his people. Say it again. God have not cast away his people. Do we need to say any more, man? God didn't get rid of them Israelites. By knowing he didn't get rid of us, black, Hispanic, Native Indians, Let's start living how he said live and reap these benefits on being Israelites. Let's do it. Our communities ain't ready for it yet. We ain't living like that, man. But now it's time to live like that. 
Now it's time to get those benefits of being part of these 12 tribes. Next week, y'all, we're going to give you an economic solution to our problem here in America and to every black, Hispanic, Native Indian community. You better be ready for it next week live on WPEB 88.1 FM. Let it hear you speak. Listen to the elder. My granny never tell me no lie. When she said the system is over. Right. The door of no mercy society. You don't listen to the ghetto youth vibes. Many ghetto youth them style. Everybody pick me one for no life. At the prison and the jail them fine. Tell me what them want with their fire. Every ghetto youth want money, yeah. And them want buy a house for money, yeah. In the streets every day don't funny, yeah. Me no know when the hearse coming for me, yeah. Every ghetto youth want money, yeah. And them want buy a house for money, yeah. In the streets every day don't funny, yeah. Me no know when the hearse coming for me, yeah. I just get a 